Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate this great opportunity from ISI North American for me to present this novel research design in this research design challenge. So as we know that efficacy tests normally do not design or power for the safety environment. So our research aimed to develop a novel uh, uh, research design uh, uh, to, de uh, to detect the safety a level of the bioactive soybean isoflavones in the efficacy test uh, to determine the safety level of this compound using in the uh, breast cancer patients. So we have invented a very new and novel soybean isoflavin enhanced breast cancer therapy. So our study shows that the uh, soybean isoflavin are able to resensitize the endocrine treatment, for example, tomagasifin in triple neg negative breast cancer. So triple negative breast cancer is considered very aggressive and lack of therapeutic options. So our study is very novel and important by providing the important, the therapeutic approach for these patients. So we have done a lot of work on animals and we would like to moving forward uh, to push our study in the phase one clinical trial. So soy isoflavin as a very, very commonly consumed diet nutrition has received a lot of uh, controversial debating. So major concern is the sorbine isoflavin are considered as a phytoestrogen that may mimic the estrogenic effects <clears throat> and interfere some hormone pathway in the target organs. So there's still no direct evidence showing that high level of isoflavins is associated with the, side of, the harmful side effects in human study. So if we want to move forward our study in clinical trial, since the major safety design problems or hurdle with phase two is how to design or determine an effective safety study to identify the potential of very rare side effects and in human studies, uh, in the efficacy human studies, when we use a very small number of humans in the clinical phase one clinical trials, and when we use a very high level of isoflavin at those and then the recommended level. So to face this challenge, we have designed a very novel uh, uh, research, uh, we have uh, provided a very novel research design in our study. First, we want to stratify the patients to lower and higher isoflavin sensitivity group based on their ability to metabolize or utilize the isoflavin in their systems. First. We want to test the S equal as a major bioactive metabolite of the isoflavin in the patient urines. So, second, we want to determine the gut microbiome that specific contribute to metabolize isoflavin in the patient's stool pa uh, samples. The third, we're going to test the, the epigenetic modulator change in the patient blood. So, you can see using these three novel bio markers, we are able to effective stratify patient into lower and higher sensitivity patient groups based on their ability to metabolize isoflavin. Second, we would like to uh, uh, treat the patient with either lower or higher level of sorbine isoflavin plus the endocrine treatment, tomaxifen, for a three months treatment. So the differences with the lower and higher group is the lower group uh, patients will accept, will receive the, the safety level uh, of the recommended isoflavin, but the higher, level, higher dose group patients will receive much higher, about 13 folders higher of the recommended level of the isoflavin. <clears throat> so you can see in each group, the patient has been labeled and uh, separated for the high, depend their ability to metabolize uh, isoflavins. So uh, we are, by this setting up, we are able to effective uh, prioritize the patient with either efficacy or toxicity ob observation in these two, uh, two uh, patient populations. 
if we did not find any adverse effects in the higher dose group, we can move forward for long-term high dose group observation to determine the potential long-term side effects in those patients. Third, we're going to observe the target soy isoflavin safety test in these patients. We're not just doing the conventional safety test. For example, the, uh, the, the regular phys physiological parameters. We also wanted to do, uh, to test the specific uh, side effects or adverse effects that are related to the sorbin isoflavin, for example, the astrogenic side effects and the combination side effects when we use this two compound together. So in summary, there's a three unique design element in our study. First, we stratify the patient into lower and higher isoflavin sensitivity group based on their ability to effectively metabolize or utilize the isoflavins. The second, we can apply the different dose of isoflavin from a lower to higher and also different time frame, frame to from short to long term uh, time frame to prioritize either the efficacy and the safety test in these patients. Third, we can uh, observe the target safety test to collect sufficient safety data in these patients. There's a lot of novel element in our studies, not mention the, the components I, I, I mentioned before. Our study can also provide sufficient data to establish a safety intake level for future nutrition studies. And more important, our study developed a personalized therapeutic strategy in the triple negative breast cancer patients who may not have enough or um, too much therapeutic um, opportunity. So our research team is composed by multidisciplinary disciplinary experts, including cancer experts, physician, toxicologist, microbiologist, and statisticians. So finally, I want to thank you for all the grant agency and IELTS North American Game. It's a great opportunity. Thank you. And that was perfect timing. The timer just went off. <laughs> thank you. All right, we have time for questions from our judges. Um, the, that the three-way test or the, uh, for potential uh, interactions or potential sensitivities, have you validated that in other patients before? Has this been used in other settings? We validate it into our preclinical studies. We haven't done in the patients. We have, we have done and published a lot of paper for this uh, three-way test in animal study in the mouse, but haven't done any work. We just wanted to <laughs> do a kind of design this study we want to do in the, in the patients. Okay. I think I noticed um, when you were talking about the mouse study, you had a, some kind of X times higher that the mice have been fed. Could you t tell us a bit more about that? Was okay. it 13 or, or what was the... The dose, the okay. Dose, yeah. So we used the, the higher dose of uh, isoflavin when we treat the patients. That's what I said. Why, why we have to face the pro the safety problems when we, when we, w if we want to do the clinical trials, we we use uh, 25 micrograms per a kilo of the isoflavin when we treat the mouse, which is considered very high. So the recommended isoflavin is about 30 to 100 micrograms per day. So we use about 2,000 micro, microgram per day in mouse. So it's about 13 fold or higher. So that's why I said safety concern. And no one have found that high level can cause the harmful or adverse effects in humans. So we wanted, we, we, uh, we wanted to design this safety test to see whether there's a potential or side effects if we use a higher level of size of flavor in, in human patients. Do you have a, a feeling already that the low dose might not be enough to help? It, 
it it could be, but we all uh, it, it could be the low dose may not have an effective. But when we stratify the patient, divide the patient with higher and the lower sensitivity group, it's possible the higher sensitivity patients may respond to the treatment, but the lower may not be respond. So that is why we stratify the patients. So pa the patient will ha will has a, a different you know patient group has a different ability or possibility to develop either the side if efficacy t test or the efficacy uh, effective response or uh, or the uh, the the uh, adverse effects. So that is why we want to stratify the patients. And my final question before I turn it over. Have these women already been treated with some pretty severe treatments and, and are they yeah. are they facing like there's not much else to do and now you're thinking of this? So uh, a triple negative breast cancer patient is normally do not respond to the, the normal uh, therapeutic uh, uh, treatment. So that is why we want to develop the alternative treatment, chemotherapy uh, for these patients. So, if we want to do this, pay, uh, this, this clinical trials, so the patients could already receive extensive treatment before they may not respond to the common or conventional uh, chemotherapies. So that's, that's uh, the consumptions. Uh, thank you. It's a great presentation. Thank you. Um, and an interesting concept. So I'm wondering if you were to recommend this for a different component, a different bioactive, how would you recommend that they do this? Like, if they if you don't have that information for the three tests or, or mm. three ways yeah. to do this. So, uh, well, uh, if we want, if we want to do the the different components, um, first we wanted to uh, to inform so whether what is the safety level for the regular human beings. What is safety level? So. Uh, when we do this safety level, we, we, if we understand this is a safety, uh, safety range uh, for using this compound, we can enhance or increase the level for, uh, for, for example, 10 photo or 20 photos to see whether there's a potential toxicity using in the animals. If their animal, if the animal didn't show any, you know, the, the side effects, we can move forward into the human studies. So uh, always we have to do a lot of preclinical works in, in, in animals in order to, uh, to uh, you know, uh, translate this, this type of study into humans, so. Thank you. One more round of applause, please. Thank you.